Hello my friends and welcome back to my painting channel and in this video we're going to be painting this really great looking 3D printed uh, Valkyrie model. So we're going to paint this one using uh, a lot of different techniques and we're going to try to create a kind of grim, dark, run down, battered, worn sort of battle angel kind of look out of this. And the reason we're doing this is we want to make a kind of cool extreme contrast between worn out, battle hardened, rough metal, uh, really sort of broken down character, but at the same time we want to create this really nice angelic bright light wing uh, sort of effect and this feel so that this gives us this extreme contrast between sort of the light and dark and also uh, kind of brings a real nice light tone to this kind of grim dark kind of effect. So pretty much what we're going to do is we're just going to start by covering all of the silvers. We're going to use a gun metal from Vallejo, which is a great middle of the road silver. This is not too bright. It's not too dark. It has this really great shine to it. So this creates a really good base color. This is the perfect one uh, for this kind of uh, base tone. If you're a Citadel user, you could use something like a lead belcher. This gun metal and lead belcher are quite similar sort of colors. So that'll give you an idea as to just how uh, much of a middle of the road color this is. So I'm just going to cover all of the armor, like I say, the pauldrons, the areas, uh, the armored parts just on the back of the wings. I'm also going to cover the weapons, so these uh, big sort of war hammers that the, uh, the, the, the Valkyrie is carrying into battle. We're going to cover those all in silver as well. And I mean, you can add extra tones and colors where you can see those sort of twisting symbols. You could add maybe a bit of a brass or a bronze or things like that. You know, you can go as crazy as you like. So once all of the silver is complete, we're then going to paint the wings and we're going to use a ghost grey as a great sort of base colour for this. Ghost grey is a fantastic sort of colour. It's a very light grey tone and a very light grey colour. It takes the models in a really nice even fashion. It's nice and light, which gives us the opportunity to build this back up, but it's also not too bright that it gets confused with white. So when you're building up your white tones and your white colours later, this will give us the opportunity to really get that vibrance and that white color and that nice nice white tone showing through now there's a couple of different ways in which you can paint wings this is just one way uh, to paint wings and i just wanted to kind of create a really nice vibrant sort of um like i say angelic tone to the wings so that's the reason why i'm painting them this way on the channel uh, for this particular uh, model but what i'll end up doing in future is creating a video on how to paint uh, different colored wings and different kinds of effects of wings uh, what, i've got one of those sort of uh, in the pipelines and I'm working on getting that one up and running as soon as I can as well for you guys. So as you can see, just covering all of those wings so we get this nice vibrant sort of uh, whitish color. From there then I'm going to use a nice dark dark red. So I'm using a scale color tinderless red. Uh, you don't have to use this one, you could use something like a corn red. You know, the kind of red that you would normally sort of base color your corn warriors and things like that in. This is just going to be a really nice dark dark sort of red color. It's going to be a great base color that we can highlight up a few times, but I'm not overly too worried about how much we're going to highlight it because as I say, we're going to grind this up, we're going to really darken down some of these areas and create this sort of contrast anyway. So don't worry too much, I'm just going to base coat all of the cloth areas. So there's a little bit just in and around the sort of stomach area in between the armor. There's a, a one or two sleeves on the model. And then of course you've got the tabard and this really long part of the clothing which is holding the model up. Then we're going to move on to one of my favorite colors on the channel and I'm going to use a Dark Rust 302. And the reason why I'm using a Dark Rust dark dark brown color is because for this particular model I'm going to paint the handles of the Warhammers, but this particular model I'm also going to paint with a much darker skin tone. Again, I want to kind of contrast things about, and I also like painting all different kinds of skin tones on my models and my miniatures. So if you followed the channel, you'll know that I like to paint so many different kinds of uh, skin tones that it creates a much more sort of um, diverse channel and a much more um, inclusive channel as well. Something that I really enjoy to do, and I find painting different skin tones to be very um, kind of liberating. It gives you the ability to learn loads and loads of different things and colors and things like that. It's really, really cool. It's a really, really great way of painting. So from there, I'm going to use a tenebrous gray. You could use black if you want to. And that's all I'm going to do is just paint some of the areas that I would normally paint black. So any of the areas like uh, in between the armor, just as you can see, just on the back of the leg here. So just in between the armored panels, 
and of course I'm going to paint the hair as well using this. Now this is an area where I'm just going to be a little bit careful to try not to get this too much onto the silver. Again, because they base coats, it doesn't matter too much because you can fix these as you go. So don't be too precious or overly worried if you make any mistakes. Mistakes are all part of learning and it is good to make mistakes because that is how you improve. So just try to be as careful as possible, but don't worry too much. And as you can see, I've just painted the little gap in the armor and I'm just painting all of the hair as well, creating this really nice dark, dark sort of hair color as well. I use the tenebrous gray quite a lot rather than a pure black color because this dries down nice matte uh, it dries down into a nice matte effect, but it also gives a really nice dark color. It's very similar to black, but it's not so black that it takes out all of the detail on the model. It is good because it gives you and keeps a little bit of that texture and detail there as well. So it doesn't overly desaturate your miniature. So that was part one done, which was applying the base coats. Now we're going to apply the washes. And the reason why I've got this as a separate part, because we're going to apply a couple of different washes to get a really cool effect. So I'm going to start by using soft tone from the Army Painter. And I'm going to cover all of the armor in this soft tone sort of color. And I'm also going to cover the face, uh, the weapons, and the tabard as well. This is a really cool earthy sort of tone. It's a really cool earthy color this is going to create a little bit of a kind of brownish sort of uh, dirty effect to the armor and that's cool because this is what we're kind of building up to we're going to kind of go a little bit crazy with some of the dirt and the grime and things like that anyway um, so don't worry too much this is all part and parcel of the process if you didn't want to put this onto the silver then you don't have to you could just focus this instead on just the uh, the handles of the weapon the face um, the skin colors and of course uh, the tabard as well because this uh, earthy sort of brown wash will tie those red colors uh, together quite nicely. Once that is done, I'm then going to use a blue tone. Again, it is a quick shade from the Army Painter. And with the blue tone, we're going to cover this onto the wings because we want the wings to look a little bit more angelic, a little bit more uh, light. And we want to have a little bit of a cool sort of tone or texture to that white tone that we're going to be building up to because we don't want everything to look uh, drab and brown and things like that. The earth colors work really good on things like the reds and the browns and things like that. But for the wings, we're just going to build this up in a nice blue fashion as you progress through these sort of highlights you'll see just how much this sort of has an effect on making the wings look more angelic and more bright and a lighter tone as well. I'm also going to add a little bit of that blue just across the silver and again it's just about building a little bit of depth because I don't want the color just to be washed out to brown I want a few different colors in there as well you could also add things like a little bit of green or a little bit of purples or pinks or things like that into your wash as well um, that is completely up to you and that's just going to add a little bit of color and a little bit of uh, sort of um, sort of a little bit more to look at with the uh, the metals because sometimes just having a flat silver or a, fa a flat brown uh, it doesn't do quite the same so once that's done then we're going to move on to part three which is all about dry brushing there's going to be a little bit of dry brushing in this because there are a few parts that we do need to do uh, a bit of dry brushing with but we're going to start with silvers and instead of going back with the silver that we started with i'm going to use a different one so this is a silver from vallejo but this is a very light silver so this is a way of really getting that silver to really shine because this is a much much shinier sort of silver this has a much much lighter sort of uh, glow to it which will create this really great brilliant sort of shining silver color that we really want on the model as well because again as i say when we sort of grim dark and grind this up with the streaking crime sometimes then we're going to have these little pools or these little pockets of area on the model that are really going to boost through with the vibrance and the silver and the shine and the glow and it's going to look really really cool uh, when it's done so you're going to try to be careful not to get the silver on too many other parts of the model um, and just be as careful as possible when dry brushing that up i'm then going to dry brush the wings up so the wings we're going to go back with the ghost gray so this is the base color that we use. This is this really, really nice light gray color. And as you can see, I'm just making sure that I don't overload my brush just by dry brushing on the back of my hand as well. And then I'm just gonna dry brush those wings back up a little so that this cuts out the need for the blue being too much on top of the wings. So it's gonna keep the blue in those recess points, keep that cool effect, keep that really nice angelic sort of tone, but at the same time then it's also gonna highlight uh, the, the raised areas and all of those uh, bits of details on the wings. 
Once that's dry, I'm going to use dead white in the same way. So I'm just going to be a little bit more careful, just making sure that I don't overload my brush. And then we're just going to build this dead white color back up. And there you go. You can really see that the white and the lighter tones now, especially towards the top part of the wings, is really starting to allow the wings to pop and look really white, really angelic. It's really starting to bring out that character and texture in such a simple, quick and easy fashion. Like I say, it's all about just trying to not uh, make sure that you don't overload your brush and be as careful as possible when you dry brushing. Dry brushing can be a little messy, but it's also a lot of fun and it does create a really cool effect as well. Once that's done, I'm just going to go with a pure white then, just for the, the final stage, just to get this to really, really highlight and really sort of bring out that tone. For this, I'm using Nake Interactive White, uh, but if you wanted to, you could use uh, sort of a rotten white from Vallejo or a really, really sort of light white colour if you use or if you have any often sort of uh, bright white tones or paints that you use. And again, as you can see, I'm focusing more towards the top, just so that this creates that illusion that we've got more light hitting just across the top of the wings there. I'm then going to use a Riley Grey or a Riley Grey, I don't know how you pronounce this, and with this Riley Grey that's all we're going to do is just dry brush across the hair. This is a sort of uh, light uh, blue sort of grey colour and this is just going to create a little bit of depth to that hair because we don't want the hair just to be pure black, we want it to look like it's catching a little bit of light and that there's a little bit of blue tones there as well. And that's the dry brushing all done. So then we're moving on to part four, which is going to be painting up all of those details. So we're going to start with the reds. We're going to go back with the Tinderless reds. We're going to go back with the red that we started when we painted all of the clothes and all of the cloth. And that's all we're going to do is using a fine detail brush is just build that color back up while leaving the wash sitting in the recess points. And as you can see, using a nice thin down paint, this is going to allow me to build this up in multiple layers and create the texture and the tone and the layer that we really, really sort of want uh, to, to kind of create the depth on the model. So as you can see, just trying to be very, very careful, especially when I get inside some of these areas of the model, just like so, because we don't want this to um, end up uh, making mistakes and getting the red now on, but the silver now that we've worked so hard on getting the silver to where we wanted it. And there you go, you can see I'm just picking out all of those folds, all of those creases, leaving the shade just doing its work in between all of those little bits. And there we go, just building this up across all of those raised folds and all of those bits of the dynamic area of the cloth. Once that's done, I'm going to use the Tinderless Red and I'm going to mix that with a Hastur Purple. And we're going to go 50-50, so just half and half. That is going to be one blob of each and a little bit of water. Possibly one blob of water just to kind of break it all down and create a nice smooth transition onto the model. And you'll see now that this is going to have a much, much, much lighter effect. But again, because the paint is nice and thin, this is going to dry down onto the miniature in a nice pleasing way. This is going to create a really, really great um, sort of blended tone and blended red color that we're going to bring through into the model. Again, we're just going to try to be as careful as possible uh, to paint this on the, uh, the raised area. So we're going to paint this on the folds of the cloth that are sticking out the most and then leave that shade in all of those recessed bits of the, the folds. But that's going to create that depth, that contrast between the lighter areas and the darker areas. And again, just using my detailed brush just like so, building up all of those highlights and all of those colours that we want. Again, making sure that we do this across the sleeves, across the tabard, and across the bit just in between uh, the middle as well. Once that's done, we're going to use the Hastur Purple on its own. And as you can see, this is a much more vibrant colour and a much more vibrant tone. And this is going to give us the opportunity, again, to really build and control how much we want to blend the highlights up. Now, the reason why I'm using these colours on, uh, on this particular model is because this model is a 3D printed model. So this gives me kind of free reign to use uh, kind of any paints that I want. And because I've used a, or because I bought a, a pack of scale 75 paints last year for my birthday these reds I haven't had much of a chance to use I also haven't had much of a chance to sort of blend them together and see how they work and show you guys on camera different paints and, and sort of the way that they work in different ways so I opted to use these reds just to kind of give you guys a little bit of a uh, sort of showing you how these ones work and kind of if 
you wanted sort of a red set or a pack of red paints and you had seen or heard of the scale 75 but hadn't used them or hadn't seen anyone using them it kind of just mixes things up and gives you a cool idea as to how they work once that's done i'm going to use the haster purple and i'm going to use a ball crimson which is a much 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 brighter color and then we're just going to build this up once again using the same technique nice little bit of water and as you can see bit by bit as we keep on building this highlight we keep on focusing more and more towards the top area this is allowing us to build that texture and that contrast between the darker areas in the recess points and then these raised raised folded areas now we're moving up into this nice light crimson color and it's really starting to allow the cloth and the, the sort of um, highlights and the contrast on the clothy areas really really show through and really sort of blend through and look really light they're going to catch the light in a different way and it's really allowing those reds to become a little bit more regal so yeah as i say just trying to take care being as careful as possible trying to pick out all of those folds all of those recesses leaving the shade in all of those recess bits and just building up all of those lights and textures you can have a little bit of fun with this and use the sort of brush strokes to create uh, textures and things like that as well as you've seen me do on the channel in other videos and there we go you can see i'm just picking out areas that i want the light to really be catching and areas where I really want the highlights to really show through. These scale 75 paints are fantastic to thin because once you thin them down they really do work well on the models. Once we've done with the cloth we're then going to do the skin. So we're going to use the Dark Rust 302 and I'm also going to mix in a small amount of red leather. So we're going to go half and half again so 50-50 which is normally one blob of each and then I'm going to use my fine detail brush and we're just going to be very very gentle and very very careful to pick out all of those details around the face. So we're going to have this really cool sort of uh, dark sort of skin tones but then this red leather is really going to bring out some of the, the colour and some of the texture and some of the, the real interest in sort of skin tones. And then we're going to use this to pick out all of those light sources. So things like the nose, the cheekbones, the forehead. It's really going to allow the character and the model to look really, really cool. So I'm going to allow this one to really stand out and look incredibly, incredibly cool. Again, I'm also going to paint that just around the skin areas on the arms, as you can see, just around the elbow on the left here. And if you wanted to, you could always just uh, add a little bit of the leather brown on its own. Um, I haven't for this purely because this is a nice, cool, quick way of getting up to uh, looking for a really cool sort of grim, dark kind of effect. Now from there, what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to use a Linidus uh, grey, which is a light, light blue grey. So you can use sort of the, the pale group blue grey that I use quite often on the channel. And that's what I'm going to do is just gently pick out one or two random sort of strands of hair and just paint these just so that it gives a little bit of a blue sort of grey streak to some of the hair and again just adds a little bit of character a little bit of texture so that everything's not just this flat flat black and it creates this little bit of an illusion that there's a little bit more um, sort of grey coming through the character so once we've done all of that i'm then going to use a matte varnish and it's important now that i use the matte varnish because i want to tie all of those colors together but i also want to make sure that the model is going to be safe for the next stage so everything that i've looked at and everything that i've read into and, and played about with uh, and checked with the um the sort of streaking grime it says to make sure that you put a matte varnish onto your models or you varnish your models to make sure that they're nice and safe and secure because when we place the uh, AK Interactive Streak and Grime, because this is an enamel um, product, trying to drag this off might take some of the paint off. So we don't want that to happen. So we're going to cover all of this in a nice matte varnish. Now, the model already looks amazing. And if you didn't want to grime it up and go over the top and things like that, you don't have to. The model looks great like this. And you could leave it like this if you wanted to. But for the the, the sort of display purposes and for showing you guys how it works i wanted to kind of uh, grind this one right up just to kind of give you an idea as to how it works so finally part five is the weathering and grime and we're going to use two different products or two different kinds of styles to really grime up and weather this so we're going to use the ak interactive streaking grime and i'm also going to add uh, some of my flow improver into this as well so the streaking grime, we're going to make sure that we place quite a bit of this uh, into my palette. Uh, so one, two, 
uh, two full brush loads of uh, the street and grime and then the flow improver I'm just gonna get my little pipette and I'm gonna drop a few droplets of this into uh, the street and grime one two three and four so two parts of the street and grime four parts of the flow improver just to allow this to move onto the model quite well and I'm gonna really mix this up together make sure that I load up my brush nice and full and then we're just gonna place this onto the model so we're gonna go a little bit crazy with this I'm just gonna go nuts and I'm just gonna cover all of the area that I really want to sort of grind down so this is gonna be all of the um, all of the armor and I'm also going to grind down all of that red which you don't have to because the red looks really really great now that it's standing out with that amazing sort of look, looking crimson sort of color it really does look very regal you could be a little bit more careful and just put the enamel on the silvers uh, but I went a little bit crazy and just covered the whole thing pretty much apart from the wings and the face so I'm just going to cover all of this. I'm using sort of a dabbing and stippling kind of effect just to kind of get this in all of the areas and all of the grooves. Um, you could be a little bit more careful if you want, but again, like I say, this is all just part and parcel of just kind of giving you guys a demo as to how this works. Just making sure that I cover all of those areas, all of those silver bits, just like so. I'm trying to be careful, as I say, not to get this on the wings because this is quite dark. It is quite difficult to remove when it is covering uh, the majority of the model as well. I don't really want this on the hair, so I'm just using a little bit of water to drag any off the hair that I've got on there by mistake. And then from there, what we're going to do is we're just going to use a brush and I'm going to add a little bit of water to the brush. So. Uh, what I've done is I've given this 10 minutes dry in time so the enamel has had just 10 minutes to dry onto the model um, and purely that's purely because it's mostly dried um, into certain areas but that's all we're going to do is just use the brush then with a little bit of water and we're just going to drag this across certain parts and you can really see there how much that silver then is starting to appear and, and come back through and what we're doing is we're just removing the streak and grime off some of those larger panels so some of the areas like the shoulder pads the fore grips things like that a little bit just across the legs just so that that allows the silver to still shine through but as this dries down all of that grime is going to sit in all of those recess points and in all of those folds i'm also doing the same thing across the red as you can see I'm just using the brush to really really brush away the uh, the grime that is sat on the raised areas because we want those to look more red and more as uh, like sort of regal and stand out and be a lot brighter and more vibrant as you can see, I'm just using a stippling, sort of dabbing, dragging, just using the brush and the hard parts of the brush to really bring some of that streak and grime back off the model so that we get a little bit of that shine and a little bit of that glow through some of those silver parts as well. Just like so. There you go. And you can uh, remove as much as you want or leave as much as you want on the model. You know, it depends on how grimy you want it, how much you want this to be really sort of grim uh, looking effect on the model. And there we go just sort of removing as much as I see fit, basically. Then from there, we're gonna use a weathering powder. This is a dark brown weathering powder. Um, this is just a cool little pot of a weathering powder that I have. And instead of wetting this, um, I'm literally just gonna take this straight out of the pot and I'm just gonna dab this across the model, uh, just like this. I'm just gonna kind of create an area where this is really gonna uh, allow this to look like there's a lot of dust and a lot of dirt and a lot of debris and things like that that have just kicked up onto the tabard of the model. And this is gonna tie it into the base as well. And you could place some of this into the base as well and into the base color and things like that. And this is really gonna bring out a lot of the uh, the sort of griminess and darkness and things like that. I'm also going to add some of this onto the legs around the feet and things as well. Um, the only thing to be worried or to be warned about with this is this is a very, very messy part of painting. Weathering powders can get very, very messy. As you can see, my hands are covered in all different paints and weathering powders and all sorts because the amount of uh, dust and dirt and paints and all things like that when you're painting these models does kind of end up all across you you do get covered in all these different things as you can see like I say just adding this dark brown effect just around the feet just to make it look like that the model has been trudging through the dirt and has really got this dark sort of mud and dust across them 
And there you go. All in all, that is everything we set out to do. So that is our model painted with a really grimy, dark, rough sort of style, uh, but with this really bright, light, vibrant sort of wing set as well. So you'll have to let me know in the comment section what you think about the model and what you think about the techniques. And if I've done anything wrong, you're more than welcome to correct me and anything like that. As I say, it's the first time I've used the AK Interactive Streaking Grime, but I've really enjoyed it. Uh, as always, my friends, thanks for tuning in. If you've enjoyed the video, just give me a quick thumbs up. It helps the channel out loads. Um, and yeah, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye now.